Hey, how's it going, y'all? Today I'm going to be reviewing a little bit of a beat that I made recently. Uh, my goal was to try to make something on the kind of in the vein of like, you know, 2000s, late 90s, uh, Neo Soul. You know, the people that come to mind for this particular track are like Music Soul Child, uh, Marsha Ambrosius. The music that I listened to was kind of in that vein this week, so I wanted to kind of go that route and see how far I could take it. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and review the beat. Uh, so this is the intro right here, and let's take a look. So just for the intro, what I did was try to layer the piano. I had a piano on the left side and piano on the right. Um, funny enough, this particular, I guess, uh, technique uh, came from a, a Dead Mouse uh, masterclass that I watched um, just about um, layering chords and uh, layering harmonics. Um, that's kind of what I went with and obviously I've seen a lot of people do that on the piano but I never quite I guess have seen it uh, done the way I, I saw in that master class uh, where he was able to you know essentially parse them out and then pan them as well which I just thought was really a cool trick and something that I may you know not really have heard on other tracks uh, but yeah then I got my bass uh, that I played in and I got some uh, shaker that I played in as well um, I got some guitar um, down here as well. Still going to be uh, cleaning this up until, um, and you know, obviously that will be uh, what you'll hear on the final version of this particular track. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and go into the rest of the composition. So what you're hearing down here uh, when it says filtered verse, this was uh, an idea I kind of got off of a uh, flow a tree um, track. I think it was, um, huh? I want to say it was uh, called uh, Flowetic. I think that was the track. That was. I might be wrong. If obviously if you guys have the correct track that uh, filters out the verse, uh, go ahead and drop that down in the comments. But yeah, so what I did is I just filtered pretty much everything except the drums um, and uh, that kind of got to like this sound here so you still kind of hear the bass and all that and all the other synth stuff going on there but then you know with the uh with the drums it kind of adds that that live bounce to it Yeah, so primarily right here, I think we have a track that is definitely well on its way to getting completed. Uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys what I kind of think of when I'm creating a track like that. Um, a lot of it, you know, for this track was a lot of piano. Um, I got a lot of claps. I got like four, I, th I guess three claps, I think, even though one of these is labeled incorrectly, and then one snare. 
And um, up here, obviously, I did all my drum sequencing and had that all um, sparsed out to the rest of these tracks. Um, Addictive Drums is definitely my choice as far as a uh, you know, drum program, as far as getting that real drum sound. Um, one thing that I do want to go ahead and review with you guys as well is uh, what I did for to get that kind of bounce um, is really focus on the hi-hats. A lot of times what I see people will do is focus on keeping the um, kick and the snare locked in, which I think is very important. But I also feel like the uh, fact that I have all the, all the snares and all the claps stacked on top of each other, that adds a little bit of looseness to that, you know, what would traditionally be where the snare hits. Um, but then what I also did was move a lot of the uh, hi-hats back a little bit. Um, so you'll see that, you know, down here. Um, that kind of adds that, like, kind of human feel. Um, but, yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you guys like this video. And uh, if you guys uh, dig what I'm, you know, putting down here, definitely go ahead and give a, give a thumbs up and uh, feel free to comment.